Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and today uh, we're gonna be taking a look and opening up this rack hotspot miner. This is a helium Wi-Fi miner. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, upgraded to the 5G uh, network that Helium came out with, and the people using these Wi-Fi miners probably were a little bit more upset that they did the transition, but the problem with this one is it just won't connect no matter what. It seems like even though the network lights are showing, they're just, it's not connecting, and then I can't find it or connect via Bluetooth. We see a little micro SD card in here um, covered by tape. We could probably turn this into a different type of device if it doesn't want to work whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, this thing is pretty much done. So we got four screws on the top and bottom, little Wi-Fi antenna, which by the way, you can use the Wi-Fi antenna on this to kind of boost your wireless. If you have a motherboard, wireless motherboard, or capable motherboard, you can use this antenna to boost your Wi-Fi. Uh, but let's just tear this thing apart and look inside of it. As far as what I'm gonna do with it afterwards, we might explore those options later. I know a lot of people that have uh, done some pretty cool stuff with these helium miners uh, in the past. So we'll see what we will explore at a later date in time. Right now, I just wanna tear this down and then I'm gonna power everything up, bust out the voltage meter and see why exactly we're just not getting any network connectivity whatsoever on this bad boy. Um, but no, no sweat off of my chin, so to speak, because I have another one right here that's doing just fine. And then I have another one um, uh, in my son's bedroom. And they're not making a lot, right? They're getting the new token, I, even, I don't even remember the name of it. Um, IOT, Internet of Things, I think is what it's called, or IOT tokens instead of helium. I still have my some of my original helium. I know a lot of people sold what they had. Okay, so we can't pull it out that way. Looks like the board's connected on top, so let's go from the top now. The screws look about the same height, so it doesn't matter whether they're top or bottom which ones you take out. And I'm sure somebody has tore down a rack hotspot miner in the past before, but I never had a reason to, so I never bothered. Now here we are. This one just won't connect anymore. And I need to figure out why the heck it won't. I'm pretty sure it's donezo, um, but we'll see. There we are. Now this module looks pretty beefy. Um, See if you can see that. So it's a low ray uh, concentra module rack 2287. Uh, there's the FCC ID, the IC, the serial number, all that good stuff. Kind of reminds me of a little, um, you know, Wi Fi card, which I do have plenty of those. But you can see the antenna only has one, where some Wi Fi cards have two. There's also two GPS uh, blank pins. Not sure if you can see that. Let me make sure you guys can see this real quick. Yeah, so in the upper right here, there's some GPS uh, contacts that aren't utilized. Looks like we got four more screws connected, two screws to remove the antenna, four more for the daughter board, and then what looks to be a Raspberry Pi um, below that. So definitely can't attack it from the bottom, or maybe we can, but it's just stuck on the USB connectors on the side. Looks like it's hitting somewhere. And there's a little nut. This is, we're gonna have to get a little um, crescent or uh, wrench here if we wanna take this nut off so we can take that antenna or just pop off the cable from the internal, which we could do by pulling this cable. But I would be very careful doing that because you do not want to bend the little gold contacts or the circular uh, clamping force that goes into that pin, that low ray pin. Yeah, so it looks like we gotta attack this from the top. So let's get onto the low ray module.
All right. Antenna's off. I'm not sure if I can pull this out. Yes, I can. All right, sweet. So here is the back of the rack wireless low ray module. It says rack 2287 version B. It's the 915 megahertz or the 868 megahertz uh, card. Beefy little heat sink. I like this heat sink. I might actually steal this heat sink for another project. Um, but that's the module right there. Looks like the module is stuck to the uh, next layer with some type of epoxy, thermal epoxy, not sure. Then we got these four of the screws down here at the bottom. Might need to remove this little bumper to give us some room to get at the screw, but maybe we don't. I just want you to come out, damn it. Why won't you just come out? These screws look like M2. The ones holding in the wireless module were M4. And then the chassis screws are just the longer black screws. I'm not sure what type in particular it was. All right, so we could be able to, we should be able to pull this board, daughter board out very carefully. Keyword should. All right, so that took a little bit of trickery. Let me show you what I did here. Uh, first off, the daughter board um, connects to this Raspberry Pi 4 Model B via these pins. And this does look like a custom uh, rack designed board, daughter board, to obviously connect the low ray module. And in order to get that off, what I first did is I took my pry tool or pliers, because this is basically sitting parallel to the Raspberry Pi, is I kind of lifted this side up, and then I got into this little notch right here and lifted again even further on this side. And then once I was able to get my fingers in there, because it was lifted up enough, I wiggled back and forth. Don't, don't just yank it this way. Wiggle it back and forth and then eventually we'll slide off those pins so you can take the daughter board off. Uh, we clearly see the Raspberry Pi 4 mo Model B. We got our dual HDMI ports, aux port, uh, Type-C power, uh, USB, I think 3.0 and 2.0, and then this ethernet, which the nick on this might be bad. I think that's why we can't connect to it via Bluetooth or anything like that. And then you got your micro SD on this side and you can see the gray material is from this thermal pad which is actually uh, six millimeters uh, high which is pretty crazy how high that thermal pad is but it's just there and that's honestly the reason why I was having a hard time pulling that off this plate uh, they come you know top is just a flat plate the bottom is the same flat plate, but then these standoff um, screw holes are in there, and these standoffs are a little bit bigger. We could probably use this on like a motherboard or something like that for the future. So a lot of parts that you can reuse if you needed to, but to get those standoffs off the, you know, off the Raspberry Pi and out of these holes, I used a special bit from the Fix-It Kit. It's the number four bit. So this guy right here, uh, which is just, uh, the right size. I tried using a traditional motherboard uh, one, but it was too big. And once those standoffs were off, I was able to kind of wiggle this plate out the bottom because you will hit on the USB connectors and then pry everything out. The micro SD 32 gigabyte has a made in China and some weird letters and numbers on it. Nothing relevant to you. I might plug that into a micro SD to see what's on there. And that's pretty much it. Um, so if I can't get this thing mining helium again, um, it would be nice to turn this Pi 4 into something else. I know the Pi 5 just came out, but honestly the Pi 4 is a little bit more expensive. Uh, other people are going for the, the smaller uh, daughter board type you know, Pi's because the Pi 5 or 4 is, is high up there in price. But there's a lot of good things coming from the Raspberry Pi team and what they've done with the, the ARM technology. So we'll see what I do with this in the future. I'll let you know on the update. But as far as tearing it down, you got your main screws to take off the top and bottom covers. 
your little rubber dampers that kind of cover up the extra antenna holes. Your micro SD, you want to take that out obviously because then you won't be able to pull the boards out. Uh, disconnect the antenna from the low ray module. Two screws to hold that module in, like so. The screws are M2, the bigger screws are M4. Don't confuse them. Um, and then, or excuse me, the smaller screws are M4 and the bigger screws are M2. And those M2 screws are what was holding in this particular module um, or the, the board itself into these standoffs. So thanks so much for watching. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification button to stay up to date, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.